Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a $15 vegan smash cake. The ingredients for this cake are super, super simple. And actually, I've heard this being referred to as a wacky cake. I've never heard that before until my friend pointed it out to me. The recipe is down in the description box below, but it's fairly straightforward. You take your dry ingredients, mix them all together, and add in your wet ingredients. This recipe is very similar to the chocolate cake recipe I normally use. There's just no egg and no milk. I also find that it bakes up relatively the same as well, and the texture is very, very close to my actual chocolate cake recipe that I use. It's just a little bit slightly more dense. The leavening from this cake obviously comes from that acidity reacting with the baking soda. Be sure not to overmix your batter. You just want to make sure it's nicely combined and then give it a few more swirls after that. You want to make sure that your cake doesn't stick to the pan after it finishes baking. So you really want to be generous with the amount of Crisco that you put onto your pans. Now I'm going to make two six inch pans here as well as six cupcakes, but you could go ahead and make three six inch pans or two eight inch pans with this recipe. The Crisco by itself, which is vegan, I should add, should be able to do the trick and make your cake not stick, but I always like a little bit of extra reassurance, so I put in some parchment paper as well. I was actually pretty amazed with the smells coming from my oven. It smelled just like my classic chocolate cake and it baked up the same as my chocolate cake as well. Now moving on to the vegan buttercream. There are lots of different ways to do this, but I think the easiest way is probably just to use some vegan butter and some icing sugar and a little bit of almond milk as well. Now the amounts really are up to you. If you like a sweeter, stiffer buttercream, obviously you're going to add a lot more icing sugar. If you want it to be more creamy and smooth, then more butter. I would I basically call this an American buttercream because we're obviously not using any egg whites or meringue of any sort. So this is an American buttercream that is super, super easy to whip together. However, my problem with American buttercream in general is that you need to keep fiddling around and making sure that things are to your liking. I don't think I've ever found one set recipe of American buttercream that I like. So I just kind of play around with it until I have the correct consistency for myself. The last smash cake that I made was blue, so I thought I might as well make a pink one this time, and I kept it really, really pale pink. The buttercream was having a slightly grainy finish, so I added just a little bit more of that vegan butter to make sure it's nice and smooth. I was super pleased with how easily these cakes leveled, nothing fell apart. It was a little bit more dense than my chocolate cake, but only slightly and filling this was super easy as well. The vegan buttercream basically feels like American buttercream. American buttercream has a little bit more stiffness to it, obviously because the fat in the butter solidifies a little bit better, but this cake crumb coated beautifully. Now, whenever you're making a smash cake, because this thing is pretty much going to get destroyed anyway, I like to keep it really, really simple. I don't like to do fancy fillings in the center, though you totally can, but it is a little bit more complicated. So I'm just putting in that buttercream that we made and I'm going to cover the whole thing with the buttercream as well. This is the crumb coat, so I'm not gonna be too picky about coverage. I just wanna make sure that all of the layers are kind of covered, but if I see a little bit of brown peeking out, that's no big deal at this point. Every time you coat your cake, you just wanna make sure that you stick it into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes for things to solidify a little bit more, and then you can go back and cover it again. I usually like to do this about two times just so I get a really, really solid coat. The trick to getting everything covered without things showing through is just to make sure that you're not 
digging into your cake when you apply this coat. You wanna apply a really generous amount of frosting and then keep the same pressure the whole way around when you are doing that swipe. It's a little bit easier said than done. I still struggle with it and I've been doing this for years. My friend is an expert at it. I'm still working on it. Once you're happy with your coat, then you can go ahead and add on the decor on top. So I'm just making some rosettes. It's really easy to do. You just use a large star tip in a piping bag, put the same colored frosting in or use a different color, whatever you would like, and then start at the center and then move your way around. I'm adding on these golden pearls, but of course, if you're giving this smash cake to a one-year-old, I would suggest you don't put the large sprinkles on, but just opt for that opal sanding sugar that I put on top. to smash cake option number two this one has a texture in it so you don't have to worry about being perfectly smooth with that buttercream it's a lot easier to make this one look perfect without being perfect I decided to mix up a darker color it's kind of maroony pinkish and I'm putting it near the bottom of the cake now, to be honest, I didn't really have a design in mind when I was creating this. I was just kind of letting my creativity flow. So I actually changed up the design of this several times, but I'm cutting out those parts so that it looks a little bit more cohesive for you viewers. I love this spatula technique because it makes everything come together so cohesively and it looks so pretty. I also go in later with some white food coloring just to make sure that everything is a little bit lighter and a little bit more ombre looking. Again, going in and topping with some gold pearls, but I really think this would look beautiful with some gold or silver leaf on it. I'm going in now and painting with some gold luster dust on the top here. And I had to do this after I put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure that buttercream is perfectly solidified before you go adding that on. And I'm just sticking some flowers in here. And these are fake flowers, but you could very well use real edible flowers as well. This smash cake is giving me very tropical, glamorous vibes, whereas the one we did before gave me a little bit more of a vintage, rustic vibe. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of this sweetie fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. 